So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace your 3.0 T intercoolers. As you can see, this one failed. And there's a little bit of clean metal right here, which indicates that the coolant was slipping through that. With this brand new intercooler, that should probably last the life of the car. You're going to want to replace these in pairs because eventually your other intercooler will fail because you have a newer one on. And I think the path of least resistance is going to be taken. Um, so your other intercooler will end up failing and this one will end up lasting a lot longer. The tools you'll need to complete this job is, of course, your intercooler that does come with the gasket for the rear, a flathead screwdriver, the smaller the better, a T30, usually three inch drive, T25. I recommend one of these longer ones so you get into the tighter space of the water pipe. And one fourth ratchet, an intercooler gasket. These are kind of expensive, but I'll link them down below where you can get them cheaper. A rubber mallet, a 3 8 inch drive, one of these pick tools with a 90 degree, and a water pipe o ring. You're going to need four of these. So here I'm on the side of the supercharger close to the throttle body. So I can get access to these four bolts that we need to take off right here. They're all T30s. So so once you take off the last bolt, you're going to want to pull it out and memorize where you have it. Because there's actually two pieces. There's one with two O-ring gaskets. And then you have a throttle body o-ring gasket and then of course your supercharger um you could replace these o-rings if you like i don't i'm not going to replace them because the only thing that goes through it is air so i don't really feel a need to replace it if you look it looks kind of brand new so it's not that bad remember where you have this because you, can, you, you can't really put it like this so there's going to be two holes where you can put those two prongs in like so but you can just toss this to the side right now the reason why you want to take this throttle body off is so you have access to this intercooler on the bolts on the left side so you can take it off of the supercharger. I've already taken these bolts off before because I know this is the one that's leaking. Um, I'm going to show you how to take off the bolts on that side and then we're going to move to the front so you can take off the water pipe. Alright, now that we're on the back still, um, take off these six T30s. All right, now that we have the last bolt removed on this side, we're gonna go to the front and take off the coolant pipe. Once you take off the coolant pipe, it's gonna be a little easier to take this off. You're gonna get the rubber mount at the front. Also, I completely forgot. What you're gonna wanna do is remove this metal shroud. It's uh, three T30s. There's one right here, one right here, and one right here where my finger's at. I'll show you that one as soon as I take it off, but I wanna take those off as well so you can have space to pull out the intercooler. As you can see, it just pops right off. Just put this to the side and continue with our intercooler removal process. So now we move to the front of the supercharger. You're gonna have to remove this water pipe in order to get access to your intercoolers. So there's three T25s on the right side and there's also three T25s on the left side as well. This is where the long T25 comes in handy. So you can reach into the hard to reach places like so and you can take it out. Later on when you torque the bolts, you'll have an easier time accessing that. Now that we've gotten all three bolts on this side, I'm going to move over to the next side, but I'm not gonna record it. Okay, now that we have removed both the front bolts holding it and the rear bolts holding the intercooler, you wanna take a rubber mallet Lightly tap it back. This part you want to be very light with it and very gentle because this part right here tends to kink in and it's very soft metal. So it's going to be a little harder for you to push this out. If you're just testing the intercoolers and you don't know if that's actually the problem, be very gentle on this part because if you mess this up, you're going to have to buy new intercoolers. All right, and since you've rubber mallet at the front, all we want to do is gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just start edging around it. Lightly, so it just 
just opens up the intercooler. This is going to be sealed on there very tight, so you're going to need a small flathead and then later work on a big flathead to just pry the gasket and the intercooler apart so you do not damage it. Now the gaskets fell under. That is great. Just continue working yourself around till all points are loose. And then later on, you're gonna move back up to the front and just uh, finish it off with a rubber mallet. All right, once you pry it enough, so we're at the point where you have the gasket loose and you can move it around like that. See how you can move it around. It's pretty much loose from the back. So what we wanna do is go back to the front end and take a rubber mallet and just keep hitting it until this comes out. This way you can save the intercooler you have and just buy a gasket to replace it because this is very soft metal. I think it's aluminum, so it's very, you can gouge it very easily, it's very malleable. And I don't recommend trying to pry this open like this because you're gonna bend this metal back. All right, we're back to the front. So you can see the gasket in the back and the rear was taken off a little bit, so what you wanna do is take a rubber mallet and start giving it some love taps. You can see that, it's already going in. And just like that, it's out. So now, as you can see, the intercooler is released. It's able to move it out. So, just wiggle it out like so, and you can take it out. So over here, we're just gonna inspect the intercoolers really quick. And if you were just doing an inspection, this is what you wanna look out for. I have both the intercoolers pulled out. This is on the side with cylinder one, two, and three. This is the cylinder side with four, five, and six, or this would be on the right side by the passenger. This would be on the driver's side. As you can see, this one looks a little more suspicious than the other. There are some clean metal on there. And I haven't wiped these off. I haven't touched this, not yet but you can see there's some clean metal right there. Let's bring that up to the camera. Well, as this one right here, the one from cylinder four, five, and six, does not have any clean metal on it. It has just a little bit small speck. So you can see what happened to the intercooler. I'm back inside and now what we're going to try to do is we're going to uh, replace the o-rings around the water pipe chances are these haven't been replaced on your car because your intercoolers haven't been replaced i would recommend replacing these my car is around 80,000 miles so it's just good to replace everything that's old as you can see this is the old crusty o-ring compared to the new one nice and shiny and uh, overall this feels newer I'm only going to show you how to replace one. You pretty much just take it off and you put it in. Just make sure it's seated. You could put some silicone grease if it's not going in all the way to just make it seat better. And uh, you're definitely going to want to torque this down, maybe lubricate it with some coolant on the inside. All right, now that all your new O-rings are in place, we're going to go install the intercoolers. Also make sure to lift the water pipe as well. So you can see there's a little damage on here from when whoever tried to take this off last and right there as well. You might want to end up replacing these if they're like this. It's not as bad and I think I'm just going to roll with this because I haven't had a coolant link on this. All right, now we're back to the front of the supercharger. And as you can see, there's a gasket around the supercharger. So what you want to do is take one of these pick tools and take that out. As you can see, it's kind of nasty in there. So you probably should replace these if you don't and you end up having an air leak or a boost leak it sucks for you but okay like so and you want to clean this area up probably some degrees here or, or some uh, rubbing alcohol just to make the mating surface clean all right once you're done cleaning the mating surface as best as you can you're going to want to reinstall this o-ring with a new one if it's hard fit in there, what you can do is you can put some silicone grease on the gasket and that'll make it a little, it'll slide in a little easier. Slides in there pretty easy. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a lip between this right here and that. That's perfectly fine. That's because the old one used to have that, but it's just been stretched out and used. So definitely replace these because if you don't, you're going to have an air leak. Now what you want to do is you're going to want to take your intercooler and just slide it in like so 
Might be a little hard to get into it at first, but that's all you do. I'm gonna keep pushing it through until eventually it's gonna be a little harder to push in. Line up the gasket and then take your rubber mallet, and just lightly tap it. You have a less chance of damaging the rear than you do to the front. Just because the surface is flat, the rear is not. Just line up the gasket as you go. And it's gonna be a hard fit because the seal on, on the outside of the supercharger is new. So just keep on pushing. Once it starts getting to the point where it's becoming harder to hit this part, just start hitting the sides and working your way in it. Eventually what's gonna happen is that this is gonna push in all the way. The reason why it's taking so long to get in there is because the seal in the front from my other camera is recording it pushed through. So it's gonna be a little tough to get in there, but just keep on going. I'm not showing how much uh, metaling I'm doing, but eventually the gasket's gonna stay in place. That's when you know you start putting the bolts in. Just make sure you align everything correctly. Put them there. As you can see now the gasket's coming in place a little bit. It's coming a little harder to take off. So make sure you align everything before you push it in more. As you can see, the inside of the gasket aligns with the outside and it's fitting well. Once you reach this point, you can start putting threading the screws back in and seeing if all of them fit. Screw, thread all the screws in so it's hand tight and then start torquing them down and start tightening them up. After you finish tightening everything down, you're gonna wanna go up here and check to make sure everything is flush and that everything sat the way it was supposed to sit, nice and flush. Then what you also wanna do is go up here in the front, get a little look, make sure everything looks nice up here. And it does. So once you have everything nice and tight and you already double checked everything, you're gonna wanna torque it down. The torque spec is around nine newton meters. So what you're gonna wanna do is torque this down and go into star patterns. Now that you're done torquing everything down, go ahead and install the next one. I'm not gonna show that one, it's gonna be off camera, but then after that, get ready to start putting everything back together. As you can see, we have now torqued down the left and the right side of the intercoolers onto the supercharger. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna put the shroud back on and the throttle body and torque it down. After that, we're gonna go do the water pipes and torque the water pipes down as well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shroud back and put it in place, as well as take three of the T30 bolts and just tighten them back together. So the third bolt that's on the shroud is right here, right next to the rubber grommet onto my right. And all you're gonna do is just tie these down so this is nice and snug. All right, we're back to the side where the throttle body is located and hopefully you still have it arranged correctly. I do here. You see these, this point right here should line up to that hole down there. There's another one up here. This point should line up to that hole in there. So you put it like so. Also, if you have a chance, you know, just blow out with the air compressor or all the stuff that could be on the inside just so nothing falls into the engine once this thing goes back up and running. You're gonna wanna take your four bolts and put them in. So once you're done tightening these four bolts, the torque spec is 10 newton meters. If you don't have a newton meter torque wrench, then just look it up online. Just make sure to tighten this in a star pattern. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the coolant pipes on the front and torque them down as well. All right, now that we're back up in the front, what you wanna do is put the coolant pipe back together and start putting some bolts in. Uh, what I recommend doing, as usual, hand tighten the bolts just a little bit on each side. You're gonna have six bolts. I'm reusing the old ones because they're not in bad shape. One of them is a little stripped, so it's gonna be a little harder to put it back in. Everything's been torqued down. So now what you're gonna wanna do is put your supercharger back on the car and you're gonna have to bleed the intercooler so they have coolant. Before you do that, you wanna make sure you've tightened down everything, you look at all your connections, make sure everything's tightened down, everything's spec, you have no extra bolts. Um, I will also have linked down in the description, the torque for the front, the back, 
as well as the intercoolers. Everything will be in the description. So what you want to do is, uh, see where those screws are right there. You want to open it up, crack it up so you can release all the air. And then eventually what you want to do is fill it up with some coolant and you want to pressurize it so the intercooler in here can pressurize with coolant. And that way you won't have a dry start. And then coolant should be leaking out of these if it's pressurized right, and that's when you know it's done. There's still air in there. You hear it? Yeah. Is there enough coolant? Yeah. It's back down a little. Yeah, it's going down. So as you can hear there, and you might spill a lot of coolant. Actually, not even might, you will spill a lot of coolant everywhere. But you wanna make sure that you pressurize it and you get out the air. So now what we're doing is we're rear pressurizing it so that we can have pressure and we're gonna open this up, let out all the air, and you are gonna drain a lot of coolant in this area, but it should burn off once you turn on the engine and drive it around for a little bit. So don't be surprised if you have white smoke coming from the engine bay. Just like that, it's pressurized, so now you should be able to start your car. And that's how you change an intercooler on a 3.0T. Any words to say there, mechanic? Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Any feedback's appreciated so I can make better videos or get a new camera. So just let me know.